push things, but we've got Nate for about half an hour. So uh, when we get to the hymn, we will simply sing the first verse of Christ the Lord is risen today. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I do not know where they are put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. If you would all now please turn to him, 302. Please stand as you are comfortable, and we will sing the first verse of Christ the Lord is risen today.
at this point, uh, with the limited limited time that we have, uh, I will uh, go ahead and, and pray, uh, keep in, in mind uh, these prayer requests that are in the bulletin. Uh, please take those home and pray for those during the day. Uh, would you bow with me for prayer? Father, we come this morning to celebrate the risen King, and we, uh, we gather with hearts uh, that are expectant that you will uh, arrive in our presence, that you will visit us in your spirit, that, um, that you will uh, show us truth from your word, but also that you would inspire us and encourage us in our walk with you. Lord, this morning we, are, we have a number of things to, to be concerned about, and some of us have brought things that uh, we, do, we don't have time to share this morning. But Lord, I pray that those who are ill this morning, that have a physical need, that you would touch their body with your healing hand. For those who are away from us, that are visiting relatives or, or have traveled for the Easter weekend, we ask the Lord that you would bring them home safely to us. Father, for those who uh, are here from somewhere else and have visited, uh, we ask your blessing upon them and return them home safely. Lord, too, as we, uh, as we continue in our time of worship, we, um, we submit our hearts before you. Uh, we thank you for your forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the promise of new life through the resurrected Son of God. And now as we continue in our time of worship, will you join with me in praying as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I want to ask, uh, if I could, uh, ladies, I, I want to thank you for the, for the bell choir uh, number. Uh, I'd like to ask if you guys would be willing to do that after I preach, so that I have a chance to make sure that I get everything in that I want to. Is, is that okay? That won't be offensive to anybody. Okay, great. My sermon might be offensive. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me begin uh, the sermon by reading the Luke chapter 24 passage, if, if I may. Okay, that's on page 90, not page 85. Page, page 90, okay. In your New Testament, in a few Bibles. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, and uh, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who had told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Thanks be to God. On the third day, let's pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, 
and my rock and my redeemer. Amen. On the third day, this phrase bridges the two most significant events in the New Testament, the crucifixion and the resurrection. The Son of, the Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day be raised again. There in verse 7. The New Testament never suggests that we believe that Jesus giving up his life on the cross alone is adequate for salvation, apart from Jesus' resurrection. The crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection of Christ are fused so that neither one can be considered apart from one another. It is not just that someone was crucified, but that someone who, that the one who was crucified gave his life up for as a ransom for many. It's not just that someone was raised from the dead, but that God raised Jesus from the dead. Sometimes when the resurrection is mentioned, we really, really struggle uh, to identify with the concept of resurrection. Uh, we don't have any problem uh, thinking about Jesus hanging on the cross, understanding that that some some Roman uh, soldiers put him there, that there's Jews, Jewish leaders that were involved in making sure that he was executed and so forth. But we all could, also can grasp the idea that that God put His Son on the cross and 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 crushed Him there. That He put all His sins all our sins on Him, and He bore them on our... On our we, don't, we don't have a problem understanding that, but when it comes to resurrection, as human beings, sometimes we really struggle at understanding or believing in this concept of resurrection. Sometimes we have doubts about that. And so, resurrection from the dead is, is so rare in our world, isn't it? It's a wonder in our universe that almost never happens. Uh, it's even a rarity in our Bible. Elijah raised a widow's son in 1 Kings 17. Jesus raised a widow's son uh, in Luke chapter 7. Jairus' daughter in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus raised. Uh, and then Jesus raised Lazarus in, Lazarus in John chapter 11. And then Peter raised Tabitha in Acts chapter 9. But besides uh, these accounts, uh, we, we don't know that there were any others besides that, but, but that's all we have. And then there are the prophecies about the resurrection in the Valley of Dry Bones. Uh, we, we have Ezekiel's uh, account there, that there's this future resurrection of the dead. Um, uh, there's several places in the New Testament, the apostles and other writers uh, speak of the resurrection of the dead. And there may have been more. These are just all we know about. And so, all of this begs the question, why is it so difficult for the disciples who walked with Jesus, who heard Him speak, who heard Him even foretell His, only, or his own uh, uh, death and resurrection, but how hard, but why was it so difficult for the disciples to believe this? After all, they would have known the prophecies about God's Messiah rising from the dead. And yet we can understand their doubt, can't we? Because in your lifetime, have you ever met anyone who was raised from the dead? let alone heard such a story. Yet we also have the prophecies, the accounts of the resurrections in the Gospel of Acts. We also have the New Testament prophecies concerning the coming resurrection of those who die as believers. Is that enough for you and I to believe that we can also believe the story of Jesus? Do we trust God's Word completely? Remember, God is not a liar. If anyone says that he is, the Apostle John tells us that the truth is not in us. Who is the liar, John says? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ, and such a person is the Antichrist, 
denying the Father and the Son. And whoever believes, the Son, believes in the Son of God accepts his testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. If we believe that Jesus is the Christ or Messiah, then we must also believe in the resurrection. If we believe that he died, we, all, we must also believe that he rose. The two come together. They cannot believe, be believed only one or the other separately. God cannot lie. God has testified through the scriptures that the resurrection would happen, did happen, and will happen to all those who are dead in Christ at the end of the age. If we do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus, we don't believe in Jesus. So I ask, do any of us here this morning have difficulty believing that this resurrection is possible, that resurrection is possible, that God finds occasion to exercise that power, even today? If so, would you trust the word of someone who, would, who actually spoke to someone who was raised from the dead? If that person stood here on the stage today, who had spoken to somebody who was raised from the dead, would you believe them? It's easier to believe the Bible than it would be to believe somebody's testimony, wouldn't it? Well, what if that person were me? We lived in southwest Kansas for a while, and we had a Spanish-speaking congregation in our church. Pastor Angel Martinez asked if I'd like to travel to his hometown in Mexico with him on a mission trip. His nephew, Rodrigo, whom he had led to faith in Christ, was now a pastor of a small independent church. And the purpose of our trip was to encourage this young pastor and do some teaching and training, as well as speak in their church. And uh, my daughters, Aaron and Sarah, joined us. They were kind of in their tweens at that time. You know what that term is. It was uh, about the mid-2000s. And we arrived at our destination in the middle of the night. We slept well in the next day. And toward evening, we set out for the church for a meeting. And it was, uh, the, the building was actually built in the backyard of, of uh, in, in the uh, compound of Pastor Rodrigo's house. It wasn't a large place, but... Nonetheless, the meeting began with some singing, and they, they led uh, with a small praise band, and we didn't know uh, the, the words of the songs, obviously. I mean, I just, I'm not fluent in Spanish, so uh, for me, that was uh, just, a, just a foreign experience, right? So, so I, uh, you know, worship in our hearts and minds, and just watching and, and listening. It was interesting how I could pick up different words and, and so forth. Having grown up in California, and even in Southwest Kansas, picking up a lot of little Spanish here and there. Well, Pastor Rodrigo then invited a, a gray-haired woman to the front. And she was a new believer, a brand new believer. She uh, testified while Pastor Angel translated for, for us uh, Anglos. Uh, honestly, uh, when I heard this testimony, I could hardly believe my ears. The woman uh, herself did not look well. She uh, looked very sickly. She was, uh, appeared to be in her 80s or 90s, but, uh, but was actually in her 60s. She began telling of the of previous day's events, and she explained that she was having very serious chest pains and called the doctor, or called the pastor for a ride to the to the clinic there in the, in the town, since he had a van and, and a lot of the villagers did not have vehicles. Um, so they rushed her to the medical clinic there in their small vill village of Guanajuato, Hidalgo, Mexico. And the, the doctor ran tests, told them their, that her condition was very critical, and he immediately sent them to the hospital in the nearest city. And he said that he would send her tests uh, forward them to, to the hospital so that they would have them when they get there. 
Well, while they, while they raced down the four-lane highway uh, at speeds of 70, 70 miles to 7,000 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, I probably felt like that, the woman clutched her chest and slumped in her seat. And this is where Pastor Rodrigo and his wife picked up the story because she was dead. And they said uh, that she had no pulse, uh, she was not breathing at all. And it's not like here in the U.S. where most of us have, have seen, uh, you know, these emergency shows on TV, ER, and all these different shows where we actually watch somebody uh, faking uh, CPR and stuff. Some of us have had CPR classes. But in this part of Mexico, they're simple people not educated past probably 14, the age of 14, uh, or high school. I know the daughter had done some college. Um, but they don't know CPR. All they know is the power and authority of Jesus. And uh, so as this woman dies, they pull over to the side of the road, And remember, this is their child in Christ, brand new believer, and their ministry has just is just in an it's in its infancy. They both began crying out loud. The pastor's wife began to quote from the Psalms as she cried, "Rescue me from the mire! Do not let me sink! Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters!" Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or, or the depths swallow, swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. The great concern that they had in that moment of death, she explained, was that the Lord would not allow his name to be tarnished. Since their ministry was new in their village, and since the dead woman had just come to faith in Jesus, her concern was that the superstition in the village, which was largely made, of, uh, made up of Roman Catholics uh, who also believed in the, the witchcraft of their Mayan ancestors, uh, they might reject their message and those in church might leave the church in fear that believing in Jesus that, that they preached would, would result in their immediate death as well. And so this pastoral couple, all alone on the edge of the highway, cried out to God, pleading for Him to bring glory to His name. And after about 20 minutes of pleading with God, the dead, the dead woman took a gasp of air and began to breathe again, her frail heart began to beat once more. They closed the van doors and continued to the emergency room, and by then the woman was able to talk, to walk. And seeing that there were no pressing problems with her, the reception nurse told them to have a seat in the waiting room. A few minutes passed, and then the ER doctor came bursting out of the waiting room, chewing out the emergency room staff and asking, where is this woman? She stood up and he asked, How is it that you're able to stand? The test results your clinic sets show that you're dying. I fully expected to come out and see you lying on the floor dead. The pastoral couple explained that she did die. But they cried out in Jesus' name and he broke her back from the dead. He brought her back from the dead. The doctor couldn't believe it and he took her back into the examination room and ran more tests and he shook his head. He said, these tests show that there's nothing wrong with you. Your heart is perfectly healthy. Okay, so next it was my turn to speak. And uh, I, I, how do you finish, how do you follow something like that? I didn't know what to say. What would you say? Standing beside this woman, I put my arm around her and I said, Yesterday this woman was dead, now she is alive, 
Who has ever heard or seen such a thing? And then I said, the reason this is possible is that while our Savior died a gruesome death on the cross for our sin and was buried, on the third day God raised him from the dead. And the congregation shouted their praise. I continue to preach on the, on the power of God to do anything he wants to bring glory to his name. I should also say that the next Sunday, uh, this woman looked totally different. Her face was no longer ashen, and, and uh, her eyes were no longer sunk. She, her face had filled out, and those, her color was back. She looked normal for her age. So what do we do with the scriptures that we've read and the testimony spoken here today, returning our thoughts to Luke chapter 24? Are you like the other disciples that doubted, or, you, or are you like Peter who sought to investigate for himself? And after hearing the news that the stone was rolled away and that the angels told the women that Jesus is alive, Peter ran. He wasted no time. He ran to the tomb. He crouched looking inside, and what was he looking for? The Greeks suggest that he was investigating the physical evidence. The scripture says he was awed by what had happened. He marveled at what had taken place. And on the third day, God raised Jesus from the death. Would you also believe? This is my earnest prayer this morning. May God bless the preaching of this holy word. Amen.
shining right in my eyes. Yep, sir. This one? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Thanks. Wow, you got good eyes. Well, I hear you have lights. In Excuse me, this is bugging the living heck out of me. Thank you, ladies. The reason I didn't want to do it during the offertory is why have to go to all this trouble in and we're shuffling stuff around. We, I wanted to be people to be able to listen. Okay, uh, Mr. Schultz and Mr. Ellis, would you help Debbie and Donnie with the offering? I'm sure I thought you would. If you would all now please turn and we will read the offering prayer together in your bulletin. God of majesty, we are astonished at your miraculous power. You raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You made him the first of a huge multitude to receive your ultimate gift, eternal life. Thank you for fulfilling and even exceeding your promises. Now Christ reigns with you and prays for us. Help us to joyfully tell others your good news of salvation. Receive our tithes, offerings, and gifts for the sake of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If the ushers will please come forward. <clears throat>
And it says, if you have small bars of soap like the ones given in hotels, please bring those to the church. See Deb Pound or Deb, Debbie Waddle. Uh, Antrim and St. John, bring a finger food for sharing. Anything to add, anybody? About that? Anna? <laughs> Okay, and is there anything else I need, like the bars, anything besides bars? Everything else is taken care of. Okay. I do not see anybody here that's this next week's going to have a birthday. So, and I don't see any anniversaries. Are there anybody, anybody we've missed, birthday or anniversary-wise? You can correct mine. It says the sixth. Mine's the fourth. Ah, the fourth. Okay, a week from uh, Monday. We will, I will drop that on the desk. Thank you. There's no, so you want to get older quicker. <laughs> no. I just, I think so I'm supposed to be correct. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're right. Okay, under joys, uh, I just talked to Rick Hundley and he said it was 95 degrees down there. But he, it, there? no, no, they, they got back. He, they was grateful to go and he was grateful they got back safely. Where did you go? Guatemala. And he did say, I asked him, he said they saw one mosquito the whole time. And that was in their hotel. So, uh, let's see, Chelsea Vision Keepers, LOS guys. Okay, Is there, are there any other joys or concerns that aren't listed here? That anybody, uh, announcements? Jane Dale's going to have heart surgery Wednesday. Okay, Jane Dale, you weren't here <clears throat> last week. She has a valve replacement, I believe it is, that has to come up. And so it'll be this Wednesday, so keep Tom and Jane in your prayers. Anybody else? We have any up? Does anybody have anything more recently about Milton? We saw him yesterday. Uh, Milton was in Wichita. He's kind of down, of course. It's been a long time he's been in the hospital. But they're still thinking that uh, they can help him. His platelets are up. Okay. What Sybil said was he's been there what two three weeks now? Three three weeks, and he, they've been having to deal with his platelets, trying to figure out what's going on. It sounds like at least they've got his platelet count back up to where it's supposed to be. And naturally, you spend three weeks in the hospital, you're not the happiest person in the world. You want to get out. So please keep him in your prayers, especially keep remembering the people in. Uh, not just Barber County, but the, the whole area affected by the fire. There was a, what, 20 square miles or so over in uh, Newton, Reno County. So there's been quite a bit of that. Uh, we, they said they had fire in Great Bend, too. I'm glad for this. Yeah. Not bad. It couldn't have been too bad because it was supposed about a mile and a half from where we lived, and I couldn't see it, so... So hopefully, that sounded like they got it under control pretty well. The other fire, the uh, feed yard had it pretty much out by the time the, uh, they, they got over there. But still, it's, it's that time of year, we've got a lot of dry uh, fuel for the fire. Okay, uh, moisture, <coughs> yes, we definitely need moisture. Uh, what about Joanne? Does she just keep her in her prayers because of milk or something else going on? Okay. Probably yeah, I'm sure she is exhausted. And and Helen, remember Helen's family and the loss of her brother. Anna mentioned it. Kim Fisher. Tim. Kim. Tim. Tim. Sorry, I, I wanted Tim Fisher. I had a heart attack. He's doing fine. They got him stable. And so that was quite lucky. Anything else? <coughs>
Yes, the Seder meal, we were small but mighty. And uh, we have a few things coming up. If you really want to know, we can actually tell you what the sermons are for the next six months. And he's actually got it planned out, the hymns and everything. So that's a bit of a help. Please continue to pray for our church as we try to replace our secretary. Uh, pray for Sandy, everybody involved. And let's hope that we have a nice spring. I think we really could use a nice spring. Gail will be playing for us now. We will sing Up from the Grave. <coughs> I'm sorry, please stand.